Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of One Man Stream. In today's episode of One Man Stream, we're going to take a deep dive into our football VMix UTC layout. Today's episode is just going to be an overview. I'm going to show you uh, all the sections of the layout. Then we'll have another tutorial where we'll come back and we'll show you the workings of each buttons and the commands that are used uh, to fire off these different uh, elements. In our previous episode, we went through our replay setup. And the replay setup is actually just one component of the high school setup. But today we're going to show you the main section uh, of the setup, which goes over, um, which fires off the graphics, uh, which clears the overlay channels, it brings in the audio. Uh, it also puts all the information into the scoreboard and uh, to the break graphics that we use. And then we'll also show you how we can uh, present some graphics during uh, the production for the different players on the teams. Uh, we actually have, uh, if you look right down here where it says uh, live stats, uh, you can actually put in live stats and I'll show you how we do that. And uh, we also have some overlays over here uh, to give uh, props to the announcers and referees and whoever else you would like to uh, uh, acknowledge during your production. So we're going to have that and so much more for you on today's episode of One Man Stream. So first off, let me uh, direct your attention to this upper corner here. And when I do this, I'm going to bring in our scoreboard overlay. And you'll see right here uh, the, the game clock. Uh, this is how we start and stop the game clock. So if we hit the start button right here, you can actually see over here uh, that the clock starts. And we can hit this button here to pause it. I'm going to go ahead and show you this button, but I'm not going to go into detail on any of the buttons today. We're going to save that for uh, another day. Um, I do have some commands uh, put into this, start and pause. Um, keeping the, the clock, if anybody has ever done high school football or any type of, of a high school sport, uh, it's actually a person, it's actually a job for just one person. It takes that much time uh, to keep the clock. Unless you have something like SportsCast, which actually allows you to bring the real-time information in from the control console there uh, at the venue. But what I've done here is I've just created two keys. One is start and one is pause. And those are operated by the F5 key and the F6 key on my keyboard. And that's how I can start and stop uh, without having to come uh, to these uh, small buttons right here to start and stop. So I'm going to go ahead and hit F5. And you can see right here where the clock starts. I'm going to hit F6. And you can see right here uh, where it pauses. And then F5 again. And it starts back up. I'm going to go ahead and bring the uh, intro in now and I'm going to click on the intro button and you can see this is our graphic that we use to kind of set the stage for the game when we're opening the production. We'll bring that in and uh, you can see some information here where it says South Odom uh, High School and if you look over here this is where that information is going and uh, I'll just go ahead and get rid of a couple of the letters so that you can see that that is what is populating that information. This information down here where it says Dragon Field, that comes in from right here. And then um, where it has the team names and the mascot name and then the record, uh, that actually comes from right here. So if you look at that graphic, uh, Fern Creek is the team on top. Let's go ahead and click and uh, click this uh, from the drop down list, uh, Team 1. And you can see that Fern Creek changes to Team 1. So we'll go ahead and change them back. Then over here for the home team, the South Odom Dragons, if I hit the drop down menu and choose team two, it'll change that to team two. And we're, we're just going to go ahead and, uh, and set them back to South Odom. The dragon information, this is actually a, it is actually a list widget, but if you go inside, um, after you choose from the drop down menu, if you go inside and click on it, you can actually change the information. Uh, that's in there. You can see as I backspace, it gets rid of the uh, Chargers record. Oh, and we're going to go ahead and put 0 and 4 back in there and get it back to where it was to begin with. And then this field over here does the same thing for the home team. It brings in their uh, 
mascot name along with their record. This next section down here is the logos. You can see all the logos that I have uh, collected over the years. I have logos for most of all the local high school teams here in the area. And then this top part is all the different inputs within this uh, vMix production, this vMix football production uh, that I have it mapped to. So anytime I change it in one place, it changes in all the uh, inputs that I have uh, mapped it to right here. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. And then right here, let me bring the scoreboard back in again. This right here is the uh, timeouts for the visiting team and for the home team. If you look right here, these yellow bars, uh, these indicate the timeout. So if I go up to the visiting team and I backspace and get rid of one of the bars, you can see the timeout goes away. I hit it again and timeout goes away. Uh, or I hit it one more time and one more timeout goes away. Okay, this next section right here is when a visitor score a touchdown or the home team scores a touchdown. So I'll just go ahead and uh, click on that. And uh, up where it said Pegasus Sports, that goes away and brings in the word touchdown. That stays in for a while. And then that goes away and it brings the Pegasus Sports logo back in. And then I have some automation with this button and then it brings in the score, adds to the score. So we'll do th the same thing for the home team. It says touchdown. It takes the Pegasus Sports um, away. It brings in the word touchdown. Then it brings Pegasus Sports in. And then it adds six. And uh, the way that fades in and out is through a data change uh, function that you can use in uh, GT Title Designer. And I showed you how to do that uh, when we were using, uh, when we uh, did the scoreboard tutorial. Or not the scoreboard tutorial. I showed you how to do that with the uh, score widget. Uh, tutorial. Over here we have down and distance and I'll just go to the drop. Well, let's go up here. I, I jumped ahead. Over here we have the quarter just from the drop down menu. We can change the quarter, second quarter, change it to halftime and then we can change it to final and that's all done through this uh, list widget here in the drop down menu. Uh, the next is down and distance. I have most all the uh, common down and distances already preloaded. But I also have for when you have odd uh, yardages, like I'll go ahead and click on this one. You can see it comes up first and, and then I'll use this other section over here and I can put whatever I need to in there first and 25. So you can see it makes it a little bit easier. I don't have a drop down uh, selection for first and 25. So uh, you see how that can be really helpful. Go to another one. Now we have second down. Team's not doing very well at all. Now we have second and 35, and that makes it a lot easier. This next one is when there's a flag on the play. I'll go ahead and click that. And you can see where flag comes up. Um, it's overlaying the score right now. Generally when I do uh, my productions, I don't use the score component of the scoreboard that I've done. What I'll do is I'll put a camera on the scoreboard and I'll bring it in and I'll put the uh, image of the scoreboard in right here. So let's go on and show some of, the, uh, some of the other graphics. This was the intro graphic, we saw that. This is one of our break graphics we use. Here's another one of our break graphics. And then we have some uh, overlays that we use. This is the uh, uh, score bug for Pegasus. This is one of the productions that we do and I'll bring that in. And you can see that comes in in the upper right hand corner. We'll get rid of that. Their pregame show is sponsored by Baptist Health, so I have a graphic for that. Halftime sponsor is Champion Chevrolet. So we'll get rid of that. And then we have another uh, break graphic that I've been working on. And this section right here is the uh, music that we use uh, during the broadcast. Uh, this is the opening music. And this is the music that we use to uh, take us in and out of the break. And this is just a 
another bit of music that we use uh, during the production. If you want to learn how to do the commands uh, for the fade, uh, I would suggest watching our tutorial on uh, the volume widget. Uh, we go over the step-by-step -step and the logic behind the commands that you need to use in order to do this fade function. I have a whole lot of automation in this right here. Uh, this is our go to break button that we use. And I just want to draw your attention. Uh, when I hit that button, not only does it bring the music in to take us into the break, it removes the scoreboard and then it brings in our uh, break graphic. And I'll click it one more time so you can see all that. And then the next button underneath of it, it brings us uh, back to uh, live action from the break. And you can see that it takes out the intro. We have a visitor bio and a home team bio. And this is actually uh, what we had set up for a, an indoor football league. Uh, that we were doing production for for a while the uh, louisville extreme and this is uh this information is populated right here um, if i click on another one you can see that it changes and brings in uh, the information uh, this player jeff branch number 25 he was from presentation college 63250 a defensive lineman uh, this next part here is live stats and it immediately sends the uh, stats to preview you can see right here in the preview if we hit the button next to it, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to send it to program. So that way we can make sure we have the uh, correct information uh, before we go live. So let's go ahead and put some information in here and we'll just add some information in quickly. And just on the fly, I put in there that the, the uh, player was uh, five for six with three TDs. Uh, if it was a, if you want to put a graphic up for a running back, it's, it's just as simple. And just like that, 10 rushes for 120 yards, two TDs. So that's just something that uh, allows you to put information in uh, on the fly. Right. Uh, the next part here, I really kind of, I really like this because the producer that we are the uh, client that we use, he actually provides us with slides to use during the game. And so I just put all of them here in a drop down menu. And then when I hit uh, uh, the name of the production is, is Pegasus Sports that we're doing this for. So when I click this, uh, you can see that it brings in this slide. All the slides are listed in this drop down menu here. So as I go through, you can see that the slides are changing. Keys to the game. I really like working with this uh, gentleman because he pr provides me with all this information and makes it very simple. And what I do is uh, I do this production for the uh, uh, for Pegasus Sports remotely. And I just listen for keys from the uh, the play-by-play -play announcer and the color commentator. And then I just go with these slides uh, on the predetermined cues. This section right here uh, will clear certain overlay fields. Let's go ahead. This one here is on overlay channel three. So if I click this, it's going to get rid of it. Uh, the Pegasus bug, that's probably going to be overlay channel two. So I click overlay channel two, it gets rid of the bug. So that's just a, a very convenient way of getting rid of, of certain overlay channels. Uh, this right, right here are the audio faders. That's how we can manually fade uh, the music in and out if we want to do that. Right over here is the uh, master volume and then volume for bus A. What we'll do is I put the play-by-play -play analyst and the color commentator, I put them on bus A. And that way, uh, when I go to break and um, their uh, mics get muted, this green button right here will actually turn red and I'll know that their mics are no longer hot. Over here, this is a lower third that we use for uh, acknowledging the announcers during the game. So let's go ahead and click that. And all these graphics uh, I made in GT Title Designer and I also have automation. So it's gonna stay on for a certain amount of time and then it's gonna go away. A lot of times this is a one man production, so uh, you can forget to leave overlays on. So that's one of the reasons why I use the timer function quite a bit because it's gonna bring it on for a set amount of time 
and then it's going to go ahead and uh, take that graphic away. One thing that you'll notice anytime I click one of the buttons that has automation in it, you'll see that they'll, uh, the outline, there'll be a green outline and that green outline stays on until all the automation uh, has ceased. Also, you, what you'll notice, um, and we'll talk about this in our, uh, when we follow up with the explanation, this is just the overview, but you, you'll notice that when I click the lower third, it takes the scoreboard out, it brings in the lower third, and then after a certain amount of time, it takes the lower third out, and then it brings that scoreboard back in. All right, so we pretty much covered everything I wanted to cover in today's tutorial. I hope you found it informative. Uh, with a follow-up of this, we'll do like we did in the replay tutorial, where we'll actually go behind the scenes on every button, and I'll show you the commands behind every button, I'll show you the automation, and I'll show you the sequence that we do things to make sure uh, that the uh, uh, that everything plays out the way that it should. Uh, if you like what we're doing here, please give us a like and a thumbs up. Make sure that you subscribe so you'll be alerted as soon as new videos are posted. Uh, we put out a video each week, generally on Friday. And you can go to our website at www.onemanstream.com. I'm starting to list uh, the titles and the vmix utc setups that we're doing there you can download them uh, from the website if you'd like uh, make sure you come back often and as always thank you so much